So this is the essential process of permaculture site analysis. First off, I don't think you're a dummy. I was just trying to get you to click on this video. But the truth is that the normal process in regular society of designing a landscape or a building is dumb. So where is the life here? It's a dead landscape because people are designing all sorts of things without any context. Permaculture design is all about context, where we start with the process we call the permaculture site analysis, whose goal is to create an intelligent design that works in harmony with natural forces. And it goes a little something like this. Permaculture site analysis begins from outer space, looking in at our magnificent planet. Every region on Earth has unique climate conditions. And there are a few major elements that determine the climate of a place. The first thing we look at is latitude. So how near or far a site is to the equator determines the day length and the sun intensity. With more consistent day length when you're closer to the equator and greater seasonal changes in day length as we move farther from the equator, and closer to the poles. There are also air currents that move around the Earth at different latitudes, which circulate moisture around the planet. So there are the polar and subtropical jet streams, and the equatorial trade winds, which all circulate moisture around the planet. So the latitude that you're located at in relation to those air currents will have an impact on how wet or dry your climate is. Another really important element is how close or near you are to oceans or large bodies of water. The areas along the coast will be influenced by the oceans and their temperatures are moderated by all that water, so they don't get as cold or hot. These are called maritime climates. And then areas deeper into the interior of the land masses are called continental climates. They have higher temperature swings because they don't have the oceans to moderate the temperature. So that's a basic macro view of the world, and the biggest influences on your site is climate. Once you understand your climate, it's time to zoom in and look at the landform. So how high or low your site is located is called elevation. And elevation plays a huge role in temperature because it gets colder as you go higher up in elevation and warmer as you go lower. Precipitation increases the higher up you go and decreases in lower areas. So the conditions on the site change dramatically as you raise or lower an elevation. Also, every hill and mountain interacts with the sun. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west and hits the sides of every landform differently. There are sunnier sides to every hill or mountain and shadier sides. The solar aspect determines how much of the sun's warming and drying energy the site receives. This also determines what type of plants and animals will live there because different species need different amounts of sunlight, heat, and moisture to survive. 
Now this is the scale of analysis where we look at the watershed. So every site sits within a drainage basin of some sort and identifying that watershed or drainage basin will tell you what potential there is for collecting and storing water, what the risk is for flooding, and what the potential is for accessing and building groundwater resources. So understanding the pattern of water flow not only tells you where wet and dry areas are, but it can show you where you'd expect to find different soil types. Water flow has a lot of influence on the soil types, and where the site is located within the watershed will tell you a lot about the soil types. So once you've examined a site at the watershed level, it's then time to zoom in again and look at the site within its actual site boundaries. So we started out in space, right? And then we zoomed in to look at the landform, and now we're finally actually looking at the site itself. Because we started at the macro scale to understand the big forces that have the most influence. So now we're able to show those forces with a map we call the sector compass. So with the sector compass, we show specifically the forces that are coming from outside of the site into the site that we need to design for. So we're talking about things like the sun. So the direction the sun rises and sets in the summer and the winter time, and which direction it shines on our site from. or the direction of prevailing winds in different seasons. Or the potential direction that floodwaters may come from. Or the direction with the highest risk of wildfire. So our design becomes a response to these forces. For example, we want to block or reroute floodwaters coming from this direction, deflect wildfires, coming from this direction, but be open to sunlight in the wintertime or cool summer breezes coming from this direction. We can only plan at this level of detail because we started our analysis so far out in space. So at this close scale here, we can map the actual details of our site, where the water flows during the rains, where trees and buildings cast shade, Now there's no way we could have understood the forces that we need to design for at this close-up scale here without having started from the macro perspective, looking at where we sit on the planet and where we rest within the watershed. So this is the essential process of permaculture site analysis, going from macro to micro. And this process is the basis for permaculture design. So don't be a dummy.